laid back and kicking it. Let's head back to the studio. Here's Rob. Welcome back to the RP Show, everybody, on this uh, Football Friday, episode 264 of Canada's Morning Sports Talk Show, coming to you from the sweatpants capital. Just ahead of Tori uh, Gurley, John O'Flynn's watching in Vancouver, and he says, I'm still trying to figure out, as I'm in BC, who is the iron lung of Saskatchewan? John, you miscommunic- You something got miscommunicated there. The iron lung is the nickname for the bus. It's not, a, it's not a person. Riding the iron lung is the bus. So I don't know what was missed there, but that's, that's the deal. Um, Tori, should I go through your entire playing history? or no. We only have an hour and a half left. Yeah, let's just talk about the TV side. <laughs> we can just say I played yeah. in the league, but we can talk about uh, the TV Played side in stuff. the league and certainly in the CFL with the Argos, Bombers. Am I missing anybody there? Uh, not as it, no, in South yeah. Carolina Gamecocks. And, of course, John Fra- Lynch, I'm just going to hand her over to you and just say go with Tory because you just wanted to talk ball with him. That's all he's talked about all morning. Corey. Tory. Uh, uh, Tory, <laughs> pardon me. Uh, what a situation in Canada and in the NFL. But the NFL says they're going to go no matter what. Do you really believe no matter what happens they're going to they're gonna have a season? There's definitely going to be an NFL. And the reason why there's going to be a National Football League is – the money it generates, the the opportunities and the jobs that are out here for everyone. You know, when you talk about ticketing, you talk about tailgating, merchandise, um, that's what helps grow the league and that's what builds the league. And if they go without that, it could truly set back everything the players have done in the current CBA that they have now. So it's extremely important for the NFL, the National Football League, to have those games on Sunday because if not – when you think about the television money from Fox, CBS, ESPN, ABC, that will take away from your salary cap. So now if you're a guy like Dak Prescott or Patrick Mahomes, you know, Patrick Mahomes is looking to sign a blank check. You know, he's going to have one of the biggest deals in NFL history. Well, if they don't play this year, he's not going to get paid that deal. And now it affects everyone. So it's extremely important for business to go on as usual. Um, I think even with the COVID pandemic that's going on right now, they're going to just power through it. You know, currently the NFL is one of those uh, monopolies where they can go find guys off the street because there's only 4,000 spots. There's millions of football players on this earth, but if a guy gets hurt or if a guy gets comes down with COVID, they're able to replace them because you have so many great college athletes that are praying for opportunity. And I think it could be a chance where uh, people can – make the most of this situation in this unique year. You think they will, eh? They'll go no matter what. Hands down. But So you're very confident. But is it just because there's so much more money, Tori? Because we'd it's, like to say the same thing about the NBA, the NHL, and MLB, but until they get on the field, I have my doubts, or the ice. But you're, you're, that's because of the money. Yeah, that's the difference? It's definitely money and, 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 and revenue. It's hands down because these guys – they're getting paid a lot of money. And these organizations, these beer sponsors, they want to see someone on TV with the helmet. Something the NFL does a great job of is, unlike the NBA or Major League Baseball, they celebrate teams. So a fan would be happy to see anyone in a Buccaneers jersey or a Packers or a Cowboys jersey. They're, if Tom Brady comes down with COVID, the NFL is not going to stop because you have so much talent. Somebody else is going to step up and play extremely well. And you're like, you might fall in love with that new guy, whoever he is. As long as you have a product on the field and the coaches are coming up with good schemes, I think uh, right now in this situation, we'll be happy to see any type of ball on TV. Now, what about Tom Brady? You're talking about him, gone to the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. I mean, this is unheard of. Great move by the people in, in Tampa Bay to do this, by the way. Gutsy move, God, and, and pay him the big money. But he wasn't getting the big money with, uh, in, in New England. And I could never understand why one of the lowest paid quarterbacks in the league. And how do you do you understand why he isn't making the money that Cousins is making or uh, or Prescott? The way Bill Belichick runs New England, um, it, first of all, is a first class organization, and he treats everyone the same. And which is badly. And that's that's bad because when you look at a guy like Tom Brady, you expect him to break the bank. Yeah. But whenever he buys into a system saying, "Hey," I will take less and allow my teammates to get these certain pieces. That hurts him as an individual. Now, New England, the team, Robert Kraft and Bill Belichick, you know, they, they're able to make as much money as they want. But as Tom Brady, he does not have he did not have a say so on who he drafted or who or who he wanted on offense. 
I and, think that ticked him off. And that and that's what truly hurt him. Because if you are a player and you make a lot of money, now you can throw your weight around a little more and say, hey, you guys are paying me top dollar. I get to handpick who I want because it kind of go hand in hand. But whenever Bill Belichick can come to you and say, hey, if I'm not paying the best quarterback of all time top dollar, John, what make you think you're going to get paid top dollar? <laughs> so you are, it's already conditioned in your brain that you're not going to go to New England and break the bank. But you will have opportunity to play for – the Super Bowl, and that's what guys end up trading that for. Well, he's got a big opportunity now with Tampa Bay, uh, but I, I just think that's totally incredible. I, I, people are trying to figure out why he wanted to leave New England, why Brady wanted to leave New England. I think it's simple, just what we're talking about. He got sick and tired of not being paid a big salary. He's still not number one. He should be paid the number one salary in the National Football League because he's the best player. Yeah, I wouldn't <laughs> say the salary standpoint. I just think he wanted Bill Belichick to say, you know what, young man? If it wasn't for you, we wouldn't be in this situation. Thank you. That never came out of Bill Belichick's mouth. Because Bill Belichick is notorious for being like, you know what? Next man up. When, when those guys went out and won Super Bowls when they were the underdogs, they walked out as the New England Patriots. It wasn't the Tom Brady's. It was, okay, we're going to defensively, we're going to go out, we're going to take the ball away from people. We're going to put up just enough points, and I got a hell of a kicker in Adam Vinatieri where if the game comes down to a field goal, he's going to ice the game. Okay, better quarterback now. He's gone. Yeah. They got they, they Jared Stidham. Bobby, Stidham. Bobby, Bobby uh, O'Brien. Brian Hoyer. Brian Hoyer. Hoyer. Great yeah. Brian, Brian Hoyer. Shout out, I play with Brian Hoyer in Cleveland. Shout out to Hoyer. Well, I mean, he's 93, isn't he? No. He, <laughs> he's 44. <laughs> he's 34. Yeah. Uh, but And the city, city of the guy they drafted from Auburn. I did a great job at Auburn. I know that. And he'll be going into his second year this year, and they're going to make him the starter. I, I see nothing wrong with that. Um, this is the same New England Patriots that had Drew Bledsoe, highest paid quarterback in the league. He gets knocked out in a game against the Jets. A young man named Tom Edward Brady comes in, and the rest is history. This guy was on a rookie contract, not making a lot of money. And they was able to go out and beat the St. Louis Rams – and they were the, the greatest show on turf, and they went out and beat those guys. No one gave them a, a chance, but they were able to play solid football. I was talking to Garnet earlier, and we were talking about different schemes, and the biggest thing that came up was knowing your identity. Bill Belichick is very confident in himself. He's like, you know what? I'm going to put together a great defense. I'm going to have a great run game, and I'm going to have a quarterback. We're not going to go up and down the field like Patrick Mahomes. But we're going to do just enough to hang around the ball game just in case if they make a mistake, we can come out of there and get the win. How about Aaron Rodgers now in Green Bay? They drafted a rookie this year, Jones, Jones, Jones the figure. Of Jordan year, Love. And he'll be good in a couple of years. Um, and they say that Rodgers understands this. One, one article, article I hear says this. Another one says he doesn't because he feels he's done nothing but good, good stuff for this team, which is true. How come they bring this guy and pretty well anoint him for the year 2022? I love a pissed off Aaron Rodgers. And, I, <laughs> and I've experienced that firsthand. I played with Aaron uh, for two years in Green Bay. And whenever Coach McCarthy got up under his skin, he, he does a great job of sticking it to people. You know, he, he still carries that chip on his shoulder from being drafted, not – in the early first round, but late. You know, that's something that still, like, eats away at him each day, like how Michael Jordan felt about being cut from his high school team. So now with the pissed-off Aaron Rodgers, and even though uh, things didn't go as smoothly as they wanted in the NFC Championship game, I think he's going to have a big year where he can light it up because he has something to prove. And he felt that way when it came to Brett Favre. Remember when Brett Favre was somewhat – uh, dangling into being like, oh, I want to play or I'm going to retire. Yeah. Aaron had to sit here, sit there and take all of it and, and take the high road. So yeah, now, but wait a minute. Now, let's, let's get serious about that. Now, I know you're saying, he, I watched that draft very thoroughly. Mm -hmm. He was going to be drafted a fourth or fifth in me because he's going to succeed uh, at Brett Favre. And mm -hmm. he was so upset he wasn't in the draft in the top 10, if top yeah. 15, top 20. He was drafted number 24 yeah. in the first round. So that's not too bad. He was pissed off because well, I every, know he was. everyone had him projected to be the first quarterback taken off right. the board. Alex Smith ended up getting drafted to San Francisco, and that's who they took. It's, and he wanted to stay home. like He wanted to play in California because he's a California kid. So with him having that chip on his shoulder, 
I mean, that, that guy was – he was ready. He was destined for greatness. And I think this year uh, with the defense, the way they played, with the uh, transactions they made on defense, having Preston Smith, having Zadarius Smith, and having uh, Jair Alexander at corner, uh, the Packers – Defensively, they got enough just to get it done. But as long as you have 12 at quarterback, Mr. Discount double check, you're always in the game. And that's what I love about them. And uh, I think they'll be pretty good this year. So despite him having that young kid behind him, he's going to show that young kid up and let him know, like, hey, kid, just enjoy this ride on the bench for the next four or five years. How about Mike McCarthy now, the former Packer coach? Had won a great cup for them, or a great cup, a <laughs> Super Bowl for them. Yeah, had a pretty good job, I thought. Was rather surprised he was fired, but he and Mr. Murphy didn't get along. He is in Dallas now, and he's mm -hmm. working for Jerry Jones, who is a very demanding owner. And Jerry Jones wants to win the Super Bowl this year, and he's, the guy, he's got the quarterback signed now, on a big contract, $30.1 million per year. Uh, what sort of a team do you think Mike McCarthy is capable of coaching and generating in Dallas? I think he's underrated as a coach. Um, I do think Aaron overstepped his boundaries with somewhat pushing Mike McCarthy out of the door. But now with Mike having an opportunity to rebuild in Dallas with the talent he has, you have Ezekiel Elliott, one of the best running backs in the league. You probably have one of the best offensive lines in the league. And now you have a quarterback. He's not your guy, but I think Mike McCarthy is great, as great of a coach as he is that he can show Dak some things that's going to make his game a lot better because that offense is wide open. Not saying that they're going to go out here and light it up, but he's going to be able to pick spots where Dak can make the most of, and now you can hand it off to a stud. Because something that Mike McCarthy has never had was a 1,000-yard running back as, as great as Ezekiel Elliott. And now when you can lean on him, it's going to open up play action, and that gives easier reads for Dak Prescott. So Dak might not statistically throw – for all the yards as he did last year, but with them winning more games and making easier throws, Dallas could have a shot to be a playoff team this year. Oh. I got I got to jump in for a second. Okay. And by the way, you're getting the magic that is John Frenzy, Tori. Are you realizing <laughs> yeah. that? That guy is on top of his game today. But I can't let this go without you saying or clarifying. You mentioned Aaron pushing Mike McCarthy out of Green Bay. Now, hear, hear me up. I've never been in the NFL like you, just loosely associated with it. The leagues that I come from, the CFL and the Western Hockey League, you could never have a player oust a coach in those leagues. You couldn't, right, John? The coaches oust the player. I could give you hundreds of examples. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Is the National Football League that different, that the players are that big of stars, that they can oust coaches? Definitely. Uh, there are players that have that type of power. And not saying that Aaron was in the forefront of it, but I'm quite sure he helped induce it. You know, with the way he played, because I've seen Aaron uh, while Mike was there, some of the play calls, he kind of roll his eyes or kind of feel a certain type of way about Mike, with the way he was doing things. But now um, when that opportunity came, when when they were able to bring in LaFleur or LaFleur, Aaron didn't have to say so in hiring him, but at least they were on the same page. Like, OK, well, my name is Aaron and this is how I'm going to do things. So you guys are going to get with it or get lost. But I think the Packers did something different. They went out and drafted their guy because they understand, like, Aaron is getting older. He's, he's, some, he's on the downside of four, well, coming up on 40 in a couple years, and they need to have a guy for the future. And, you know, LaFleur signed that contract for six or seven years, and he want to make sure that he's covering his behind because if he loses, he want to lose with his player. He doesn't want to lose with the Aaron Rodgers, even though that seems far-fetched. But – if, if the poop does hit the fan, I'd rather have my guy uh, you know, who we draft our first round draft pick than me dealing with the old regime. I got a couple of the latest books for this year predictions so far. And believe it or not, both of them are predicting the uh, Cleveland Browns to make the playoffs. You think there's any chance of that? Oh, as they oh. did last year, by the way, uh, as they did last year. Yeah, I got love for Cleveland, but I, I, I don't know. I think it all falls on the shoulders of uh, Baker Mayfield. Everything, it, it, it truly falls on him because he has a coach in Stefanski. He has so much talent. Odell Beckham, Jarvis Landry, Nick Chubb. You have uh, Kareem Hunt that's on a bench as a, as a backup running back. You have Njoku, Austin Hoop. You have so much talent. It all falls on Baker Mayfield to go out and disperse the ball and just the, the leadership. 
Like if Baker goes out and he does some boneheaded things, then it truly can be a detriment to the team. But it, it, it's all on him this year, so we'll just have to wait and see. Yeah, and I hear it really is all on him. See, if he doesn't make it, he is gone. Yes, definitely. Is that because, pretty rough? No, that, that's part of that's nature of the beast. You know, and Cleveland, and the thing about it is Cleveland, if they have a bad year, I think the two, here are the two teams that I think can tank and it makes the most sense for them. I think New England could tank. And the reason why I, I say New England could tank, their most valuable player right now is one of my closest friends, Stephon Gilmore. He's a cornerback. If New England, say, first six, eight weeks of the season, they're two and five or, or two and six, you have the trade deadline coming up in the halfway mark of the season. You trade stuff on Gilmore, you get draft picks, you tank the rest of the season, and there's a young man at Clemson named Trevor Lawrence. Now you're in the lottery to get that guy. So uh, now – Gilmore at Clemson, man. Clemson. Yeah. So – and I can see Cleveland doing the same thing. Like, you know what? If it doesn't work, if it's a dumpster fire, we'll tank the rest of the season and we'll be in the, in the running for Trevor Lawrence. And now you still get to keep that same talent and you bring in Trevor Lawrence on a rookie contract. Kansas City, all the way? I think it's going to be between Kansas City and Baltimore, but something about winning the Super Bowl and having uh, it extended offseason, you get fat and lazy because everyone is telling you how great you are. Like, you wake up every day and you are a Super Bowl champ. You lose that sense of urgency. And it wouldn't shock me if they come out uh, opening game on Thursday. I, I don't know who they play, but I know they have the first game of the season. If they go out and get beat, it wouldn't shock me at all. Uh, by the way, from our viewers, we've got a, quite a few questions here. From our intern, Alan, you met him, the Asian sensation. Oh, yeah. He wants to know if there will be the same hype for Trevor Lawrence as there was for Joe Burrow going into last year's draft. It's going to be more hype because Trevor Lawrence would have been the number one pick this year. You know, you this, so? this guy is extremely talented. Uh, I was able to work with him at a camp, the Adidas football camp last year. It was Trevor Lawrence, Tua Tagliaviola, uh, Jalen Hurts, and uh, Justin Herbert. I, I've seen all these guys, got to work with them up close and personal in California, and Trevor Lawrence literally head and shoulder, one of the best throwers. Of the, matter of fact, he and Patrick Mahomes were the best quarterback at that camp. Really? And Patrick was already <laughs> – Patrick was there as a counselor just like I was. But How about Hurston? I think he comes off Oklahoma. He can go to Philadelphia and be the difference maker there. But you paid Carson Wentz $100 million. Yeah, too much. Yeah, so the money plays in, in the National Football League. So if you if you have a $100 million contract, best believe he's going to take the, the majority of the stat, snaps. Now, they might have some stuff for Jalen Hurts to go out and, uh, you know, maybe some wildcat, maybe a two-point conversion, um, similar to Taysom Hill with the New Orleans Saints. Yeah. Now, I don't appreciate how they pull Drew Brees out of the game in key moments for Taysom Hill, but, hey, you know, that's part of the game. But – I think Doug Peterson in, in Philadelphia, they'll find a way to make it work. It's not going to be a two-headed quarterback, but they'll have certain schemes set up for him to keep the defense honest. From the viewers, uh, and by the way, we'll keep this rolling into hour two. Lynch, you want to stick with us an hour two? Sure. Are you having fun? I certainly am. I had a sense. I am. Dumb question from me. <laughs> yeah, of course. You, this is exactly what we wanted uh, in terms of Tory being here and the barbecue is very nice, too. Um from Brian Warishin from Vancouver watching, he, he runs the BC Lions Den podcast. He wants your thoughts on the Seattle Seahawks in 2020. Woo, uh, there's a lot of talk about Antonio Brown and, and Josh Gordon potentially being uh, free agent signings for Russell Wilson. Oh, boy. I think Russell does not get enough credit. Um, he's one of the smartest players, very versatile, and you can depend on him week in and week out. I mean, he really hasn't missed too many games in his six, seven-year career. And if they can put some pieces around him, I think Seattle will be tough. But they, currently, they don't. They're somewhat old school. They like depending on the run game. But I think if you just open the offense up and let Russ do his thing, that guy's extremely dangerous. Okay. But they have to do it with those two guys, A.B. and Josh oh, Gordon? Man. Like I think Pete Carroll can handle those type of personalities as well as <sighs> Russell Wilson. But if not, you know, those, the Seahawks are still in the playoffs without those type players. Right. But that right there could get them over the top. Okay. We've danced around it, so you know I'm going to ask you. Who, in your opinion, is the best quarterback in the National Football League? Oh, Patrick Mahomes. It's, yeah. um, right now. I'm, I'm amazed why you say that. 
And, and the reason why I say Patrick Mahomes is he's only been playing pro football for two years. And the, the light bulb is, is cut on. This guy, is in his, he's not even in his prime. But the ability he has to extend plays in the pocket, to, he has a bazooka arm. I mean, a bazooka. You put it on your shoulder and you just let it fly. And he can throw it 80, 90 yards. And we have guys like Tyreek Hill, Travis Kelsey, and uh, McCole Hartman. When you have that type of speed on the perimeter, it truly stresses the defense. Because you can't, you, re- you really can't take your foot off the gas. I-, I think the only way to beat the Kansas City Chiefs is to blitz them. Like, you got you to gotta, you gotta frustrate them. You got to have somebody in his face. And you got to have someone to hit them. Because if not, if you give them time – He'll pick you apart like a pulled pork sandwich. <laughs> All right. We need to pause. Let me just say this. What is on the menu for the barbecue, Tori, as we close our one? What you got in the back? We have our famous marinated – Kim and I, my sugar. We have our famous marinated chicken. Uh, we have our burgers, and we have hamburg- and we have hot dogs as well. So I think it's about 11 or 12 of us. I got enough for for the crew, and I think we're truly going to sit back and enjoy it. But last but not least, we have Kim's famous macaroni and cheese. Oh, nice. Yes, so it's 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 about to go down. It's, <laughs> it's a good old-fashioned barbecue here. Have we sent DuPont out for buns? He's, he's on that? Well, we brought that, too. You got it all? Yeah, we got it. I just need that Kingsford charcoal. I can't cook without it. Okay, but we got Phil Rossignol bringing in the grill. Frenzy sticking with us in hour two. Tory Gurley with us, our NFL insider, NFL, CFL, NCAA alum, and Blue Bombers Hall of Famer, Canadian Football Hall of Famer, Doug Brown, coming up in hour two, as well as the president of the Saskatchewan Rattlers Pro Basketball Team, Lee Genier. Stick around. We'll be right back. It's the RP Show on Facebook Live, Game Plus TV Network, and listen live at rodpeterson.com. Hey, Rod Squad. Now you can join the team with your very own RP Show gear. Head to rodpetersonshop.com and get yours today while supplies last. It's just like we wear on the show. Official RP Show gear at rodpetersonshop.com.